Did you know that Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger use this simple calculation to make decisions on what they end up buying? It's called lost opportunity costs. And there are lost opportunity costs on buying one stock versus the other stock, but there's also lost opportunity costs in the actions you take in your life. Hope you enjoy it. And thank you to everyone who likes, shares, and follows our group. And also, please leave a review. What I really needed was to recreate myself, which means to bring something new into the world that has never existed before. Today we're going to talk about the paradox of choice. The simplicity of, of measuring one choice to the other. And I, I'm going to talk about a, a concept that a lot of people never consider when they're making their decisions and their, and their choices in their lives. And it's called lost opportunity cost. And I'm going to read the definition of lost opportunity cost. This is a big deal with uh, Berkshire Hathaway. Simply stated... An opportunity cost is the cost of a missed opportunity. It is the opposite of the benefit that would have been gained had an action not been taken, the missed opportunity. And it's used in economics, like the lost opportunity cost of one stock to the next is very common. You know, uh, if you put a thousand bucks in a stock that made 10 percent, but there was other stocks that made 20% that were available. The lost opportunity cost on not choosing the better stock was 100%. You get that, Steve? Of course. Yeah, man. All right. And I want to I give everybody a very simple um, sports analogy. There's lost opportunity cost in sports. Mm-hmm. All right. So I'm going to take you to the two, to 2000 draft. Right. Six <laughs> quarterbacks were drafted before one Mr. Tom Brady the GOAT of quarterbacks. Six were drafted before him, right? Do you know who they were? You probably don't, right? I have no idea. No. Chad Pennington, Gino <laughs> Carmazzi, Chris Redman, T. Martin, Mark Bolger, and Spurgeon Wynn. And then Brady was picked number in the sixth round. Wow. Right? So what was the lost opportunity cost Oof. to the organizations that didn't pick Brady? <laughs> Right, six Super Bowls. How many? Oh, he had six Super Bowls. But how much <laughs> money? You know, it's the amount. Of, it's the amount of money right. the organization would have made, the amount of fans they would have attracted, the amount of prestige in having Brady in the organization. There's a ripple effect that can't be measured. Mm-hmm. The difference between them not picking Brady and picking Brady is lost opportunity cost. Does that makes sense. Definitely. So I, I'm thinking when you thought sports, I was thinking a four point swing, like the really simple example in basketball. You mm-hmm. miss a shot. The other team comes down and gets a quick bucket. Four yeah. point swing. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's cool. Explain that. So, yeah, it's like they call it a four point swing where it's like if you take a dumb shot a lot of times, mm-hmm. like instead of you scoring two points and it leads to a since it's a dumb shot leads to an easy rebound, mm-hmm. quick transition quick bucket for the other team they score two points so you took a dumb shot which could have been two points but now it's zero so that's negative two right and then they score a quick bucket that's two for them so that's a quick four point swing right there right and i use that so much in so many things that i think about especially mindset of course because there's a choice to be made and every choice has a cost to it and you and i are wrapping on alcohol you know booze versus books so let's take the 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 the, the choice of having alcohol every day versus reading every day mm, yeah it's right? ridiculous reading yeah. a book every day so what do you so if you if you choose alcohol and you choose not you know when you choose alcohol obviously you're choosing not to read so let's say what are the, what is the minus ones off of alcohol you lose what number one hydration is a big one i didn't even think about that so you, yeah that's what alcohol I think first, dehydrates yeah. you number two it, it it ruins your sleep yep number huge. three brain it, it det- you know deteriorates your brain cells number number four Motor skills, same thing. Yeah, uh, judgment, impairment. Right. Uh, number five, mm. calories. Ca- oh, yep. Yeah. Number six, you make an ass out of yourself <laughs> a million different times. Number seven, the time. Mm-hmm. Money. Number eight, it's expensive. Like there's, there's like very, very little. Uh, so there's a massive cost to doing alcohol. So let's say that's a minus ten. Easily, there's ten bad things about right. doing it. And then say you 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 
delete alcohol and you substitute it with, with a book, right? It's a pretty extreme example, but I did that in my own life. I started binging, stopped binging on booze, started binging on books. So since 2017, I've read way over probably 150 books, right? Yeah. I've actually done about 60 book reviews. This, yeah, this year, how many? Yeah, we did like a 30. Lot. Yeah. I mean, but I don't drink alcohol anymore, so I get back all the time. I get back all the calories. I don't burn calories on alcohol. One unit of alcohol has about 100 calories in it, by Oof. the way. I was drinking about 30, 30 units a day. So I was drinking 2,500 calories of alcohol a day. <laughs> you get back the, you know, so I'm recovering all those opportunities lost. I'm getting better sleep. I have less toxicity. Um, I'm more hydrated. And then I get all the things that, that books give you. So, so when you have a choice of doing something versus doing something good or bad, it's not just one's better than the other. You don't get one point. You get two or four. In this case, stopping alcohol and just reading a book, if it had no other benefit than um, save you time, you'd get 11. You'd be plus 11. you get the, the minus 10 back from all the bad things of alcohol, and then you get the things with books. But books don't start at... They don't stop at um, plus one because you get the knowledge. What else you get? You get the health benefits. I use it for sleep as well. It helps you unwind. It's a good way to like give you some space in your brain instead of always on screens. You get cognitive benefits. You get, yeah, your brain, your brain is more sharp. It's trained. Remember Limitless? They were talking about how reading is one of the best ways to train your muscle of right. your brain. Yeah, you, you can actually absorb more, more, more knowledge. You can create content with the books. You can create community. You can have conversations about interesting things with other people or reading books. You can meet people using books. So books versus booze is just such an easy, uh, uh, easy uh, choice. But lost opportunity cost is in everything. It's in economics. You know, if you you know if you do one thing, you buy one property versus another property. The lost opportunity cost is the um you know the difference in what one could have done to the other but here's here's another example in the domino effect right so i talk about dominoes so a two inch domino can knock over another two inch domino my most popular metaphor is the domino effect that i didn't create by the way i kind of <laughs> seen it around and i said i like it and i used it and i got results with it so now i teach on it the domino effect is interesting to people because the domino stores energy and when that energy is moved forward, that domino creates what's called action potential and uh, amplified force. So it's moving forward at a greater force than it actually has, all right? 50% greater, that's the, exact, the amount of extra force in the domino effect, it's actually half better. So the domino that you see on all the YouTube videos where you know, there's two million of them lined up is a two inch domino knocking over another two inch domino. Right. Right, that's called the domino effect. Do you know that that first action potential is underutilized by 50%? Mm. So the two-inch domino can actually knock over the three-inch domino, right? So that extra action potential is, is maximized at 50%. So a two-inch domino knocks over a three-inch domino, right? And then the three-inch domino can knock over a four-and-a-half-inch domino, and the four-and-a-half-inch domino can knock over almost a seven-inch domino, and that never stops repeating itself. So just five progressions out where one, two, three, four, five, a two-inch domino that knocks over five two-inch dominoes is at two inches. A two-inch domino that knocks over five dominoes maximizing its action potential is like 25x bigger because the domino gets bigger on height and weight. It's like 25 times, just five progressions in. You know what you reminded me of? Um, speaking of all these things, how there's the four-point swing and how your decisions can go one way or the other. David Goggins, one of my favorite quotes from that book, Can't Hurt Me. I don't know mm -hmm. if you remember that quote, but or this one, it says, uh, he says that you're either getting better or you're getting worse. Right. And so there's never like a neutral, even if you're just sitting still, even if you're not drinking alcohol, you still have to drink the water too. So like if you're not drinking water, whatever's happening, you could, you're always going one way. You're never just standing still. So that really reminds me of all these things. That's why I'm really motivated to do the healthy things because if I'm not doing the healthy habits, it's not that I'm just standing still. I'm definitely going backwards. Well, the same is true in money. If your yeah. money's not working for you, it's eroding. Mm. Like there's certain things called, uh, you know, I've seen a metaphor that money and, money and fruit, you know, if you, if you take a dollar 
and you leave it there for 10 years and it sits in your bank account with no interest, how much is in there? Right. Is it a dollar? No. <laughs> what is it? Less. It's gone. Purchasing power, right? Right. So it doesn't, you know, the dollar will still be there, but it won't be worth a dollar. So if you took a piece, an orange and you put it on a table and you waited 10 years, what would be left? It deteriorates. Yeah, that's called erosion, right? So you're either eroding because there's eroding factors at, in our bodies because our lives are not infinite. So if you have a day and you have action potential in the day and you waste the day scrolling and drinking and, and, and doing brainless shit, <laughs> uh, you're going to be losing your day. You lose like it erodes. That lost opportunity cost is what it could have been versus what it is. So in the domino effect, a one inch domino that knocks over or a two inch domino that knocks over 18 two inch dominoes. How big's the domino after two after 18 progressions? 18 two inch dominoes Oof. is 18 exponential, right? No, it's just two inches. Oh, right. Yeah, I thought you were talking about the... But if it's if, it, if a domino's maximizing its action potential, a two-inch domino knocks over a three-inch domino. 18 progressions out, where one was just two inches tall, the 18th progression with full maximum action potential is the Leaning Tower of Pisa. Wow. 18 progressions. A two-inch domino can knock over a two-story building. 23 progressions, it can knock over the Eiffel Tower. 31 progressions, it can knock over Mount Everest. That's how fast action potential works. In 57, this is in Gary Keller's book, The One Thing. In 57, 57 two-inch progressions maximum is the moon. So when you waste your action potential you're, you're through, through ineffective choices, you are robbing yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, Think about... You know, in my own life, like I'm, I'm 52. So since I've been 48, I've been reading pretty regularly and sharing what I've read. Like it's part of my journey. But for the since I was 18 years old, for almost 30 years, I wasted all my time and energy and not reading. I didn't start reading till I was like 48. Right. What have I lo- what have I lost? I, <laughs> I mean, what have I lost? <laughs> What is the what was the last opportunity cost in that decision? Mm-hmm. So Not, many people, sorry to cut you off, but so many people think that, and they're like, "Ah, oh, it's too late." But then they say, "But then that's even more." You're like, "Well, you better start now because." But yeah, the people get stuck in that mindset. Oh, it's not. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. Yeah, the second best time is when. <laughs> right now. Right now. Uh, yeah, three years into this, and while by no means I'm lighting the world on fire, there's something that's there that was never there before. There's almost 600,000 people on Instagram, uh, TikTok, and Facebook, and another 100 grand splattered everywhere else. So almost 700,000 people are connecting directly and indirectly to the content that I make because I made the decision to stop drinking and start reading. Binge on, binge on booze no more, binge on books daily. Love it. Uh, that's the idea. Action potential lost opportunity cost. You're either going towards something or away from it with every single choice. And that's talked about in that paradox. The real, the real, the real issue here is you don't have a choice. So if you want to move towards what, what your goals are, there's a very clear choice every single second of the day versus you want to move away from it. You know, you, you can, you can know that that's the wrong choice. Hope this is helpful. 